Bill Hartwell didn't start out as a racing photographer, but he ended up as one of the greats. Bill and his wife Marie lived in the Syracuse area, and Bill would be friend Chuck Ely, who raced those early days at Oswego Speedway. One night, Chuck asked Bill to come down to the track and take some photos of his car. Bill did so, and shared some with Harry Caruso at one point in the early 1960s. Harry took one look at the shots and said to Bill, you'll be here every week, right? And not wanting to say no to one of the track owners, Bill did just that, and for many years to come. In those early years, brothers Don and Doug Kranz were the track photographers, and they welcomed Bill to the fold. By the early 1980s, Bill and Don Kranz teamed up to establish B&D Photo in Oswego, as there was no place at the time to do what they needed done. Besides doing film processing and everything else a photo lab did, B&D became known as the place to go for racing photos. Many, many of the photos produced over the years in the Oswego Eagle came from the duo, and Bill's color shots graced the covers or color center sections inside. Bill was definitely the color man for photos. One person who Bill recalls as a special friend was Jim Champagne. Jim would invite Bill over to his shop, and Bill says he probably saw the famed rear engine eight ball before most people. Veteran fans will remember the many Champagne shots Bill took, especially the one with Jim in the middle of his two famed race cars taken at Jim's house. The Hartwells, married 63 years now, raised three sons. Ed, a surveyor of roads and bridges, joined his dad for a while shooting photos at Oswego until a growing family and their sports and activities caused him to stop his Saturday nights at the track. Two other sons, Kurt and David, and their families reside in the San Diego area. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Bill Hartwell. Bud Young was a member of the Oswego Speedway Safety Crew, serving as the ambulance driver. He started work at the Speedway in the early 50s when he was an employee of Mentor Ambulance Service in Fulton. He worked closely with Dr. John and Helen Pazakis, members of the Caruso family, who also served on the Speedway Medical Crew for many of the early years. When the Carusos purchased their own ambulance in the early 80s, they hired Bud to man it on race nights. Bud was joined by his brother John Young to serve on the ambulance crew for many years in the 70s and 80s. Bud served on the Oswego Speedway safety crew until 2004 when the Caruso sold the track, ending a 50-year stint as the ambulance driver. Approaching 80 years of age, Bud is still in good health and lives in Fulton with his wife Judy and still works for Mentor Ambulance on occasion. When asked about some specific memories about his longtime service, he was quick to first point out how proud he was to be a part of the Speedway safety crew for so long and still thinks it's the best of any track in the country. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Robert Bud Young. was thrown out for the 1962 season at Oswego Speedway, it precipitated a weekly invasion of supermodified competitors traveling from the state of Michigan to try and take home the huge prize of $500 to win a 35-lap feature event. Among those invaders was Dave Paul from Burying Springs, Michigan. Driving a Buick-powered Super painted pink and black in number 21, Paul quickly established himself as one of the top runners. He first cracked the top five on June 16th of 62, finishing second to Nolan Swift. His first feature win came on September 8th of 1962, and two weeks later, he won the prestigious International Classic, besting a field of some 82 Super Modifieds, the largest number of Supers ever assembled at Oswego Speedway. The following 1963 season saw Paul win the season opener and five more features throughout the season en route to the 63-point championship. He topped that off with a fifth-place finish in the 63 Classic. In just two seasons, Paul had won the coveted Oswego Track Championship 
International Classic, eight feature races with 26 top five finishes. This sterling performance in such a short period of time has earned Dave Paul acceptance into the Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame under the Special Achievement category with such other notables as Gordon Johncock, Ronnie Lux, and Davey Hamilton. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Dave Paul. Family ties in auto racing are among the strongest ties in all of sports. The itch to compete at a high level in motor racing continues to fall from generation to generation, and one of the first early transitions in the Northeast was that of the Hogue family. Dutch Hogue, who needs no introduction, was one of the fiercest modified competitors in all of the Northeast throughout the 1950s and 60s. And before long, his son Dean had the itch to become a driver. And in the 1970s, Dean climbed aboard one of Dutch's older backup entries and began competing with it at Shangri-La Speedway. Dean would go on to drive modifieds for a few years in the 1970s, winning a track title at Perry Raceway in 1978, before eventually moving to Oswego Speedway and Super Modified Racing in 1979. Hogue excelled rather quickly at Oswego. In June of his rookie year, Hogue drove to a fourth place finish and would go on to be named Oswego Speedway Super Modified Rookie of the Year. Throughout the early 1980s, Hogue continued competing in the Super Modified division at Oswego, searching for his elusive first career victory. And at last, it would come in July of 1984 with the victory in the second leg of a Twin 35 special over Brian Herb, Joe Gosick, Johnny Teresi, and Eddie Bellinger. Hogue continued his pursuit of another Super Modified main event win at Oswego through the 1992 season before he decided to make the move to the newly designed Limited Super Division in 1993. It was a part of Oswego's unique Limited Super class that Hogue would rewrite the history books during the division's inception. Hogue would hook up with local fabricator Jim Paternoster to drive the potent number 41 machine and in their first two full years together drove to five feature victories, two more than any other driver in that span. Their hot streak continued into 1996 as Hogue piloted up five feature wins to garner his first Speedway Championship over Billy Isaac and Bob Gutermount, and he would not stop there. Hogue became the first driver to secure back-to-back -back championships in 1997 with yet another five main event wins, three more than any other driver that season, to defeat Bob Bond for his second division crown. In 1998, Hogue would have to settle for second in the division championship behind Ray Graham. But regardless, Hogue had completed one of the most dominant spans in limited super racing at Oswego Speedway from 1994 to 1998. During that time, Hogue collected 16 main event victories, two championships, and a classic victory. His 16 main event wins still stands fourth on the all-time win list behind Mike Bond, Russ Brown, and Dave Gruel. Since retiring from racing at Oswego Speedway, Hogue has gone on to become the owner-operator of Blackrock Speedway in Dundee, New York, and of course, has helped foster the racing career of his son, Alex, who has competed at Oswego Speedway in Super Modified Racing and looks to return to the Speedway in 2014, teamed with none other than Jim Paternoster in the Pathfinder Bank SBS division. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Dean Hogue. Mike Ordway is and has been one of the household names in supermodified racing for many years. He's known far and wide for his driving prowess, his dry sense of humor, and his incomparable patience. Most of all, he is known as a man who is supported by a close-knit, loving, and most of all, a solid racing family. Wife Kathy, his son Mike Ordway Jr., and daughter Jessica, who is now engaged to supermodified star Trent Stevens, have been with him since the beginning, and they still serve as the best fan club a driver could have. 
Mike's racing career began just down the street from his Fremont, New Hampshire home at Star Speedway in 1980. That was in a modified, but in the next year he began competing in his own super modified. Mike first hit the Oswego Speedway asphalt in 1982, pulling into the pits with his own orange number 10, renumbered 19 at Oswego. He achieved a great deal of success those first years, and by 1989 was knocking at the top 10 in points, garnering a 12th place that year. By the latter years of that decade, he was driving for Clyde Booth, a car owner he would leave and come back to many times over the next 20 plus seasons. In 1990, Mike would embark on a super modified career that saw him driving for a couple of the most famous names in car ownership. Mike was behind the wheel of the sleek black Graves No. 1, and a year later, that car and team would bring him his first Oswego Speedway Championship. In 1992, the team came in second in Oswego Championship points after making a serious bid for a back-to-back -back title. Mike would then move to Team Dunnigan for 1993 with his teammate Bentley Warren. In 1995, Ordway came to Oswego with the Dunnigan number 26 to finish second in both the Isma Super Nationals and the Budweiser International Classic. By the end of the 1990s, Ordway had positioned himself in fourth on Oswego's all-time feature win list and sixth in the top five list. The biggest win that had eluded Ordway, who had won six Mr. Supermodified titles, was the Budweiser International Classic 200, and that finally came in 2003 when he drove the Clyde Booth number 61 to victory. This win completed the record book for both Booth and Ordway, who had been trying to get into the elite list of winners for years. The combination of Booth and Ordway was a dominant one in the early 2000s, as Ordway went on to collect 12 of his 30 Oswego Speedway wins driving the booth number 61 from the years 2001 to 2004, including three consecutive Mr. Super Modified titles. Ordway still stands ninth on the Oswego all-time feature win list and 11th in top five finishes, with a place in the top 25 of the all-time Oswego Super Modified point list. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Mike Ordway. In the early days of racing at Oswego Speedway, the pits were filled with backyard racers, the guys who maintained and drove their own equipment. It was in those days that Jim Sewell came to Oswego. Sewell began his association with Oswego Speedway following Jack Murphy, and from there on end missed only a few years of competition. When the Supers were evolving, Jim bought the old Trimble Dorsey Sprinter and put Bruno Marchison behind the wheel. In 1970, a young kid named Jimmy Winks drove the Sewell car to Rookie of the Year honor. Sewell took a break after Winks moved on to Hagen Howard's team, but he was back in the early 1970s with an old upright and Ron McLeod as the driver. He worked with Eddie Bell for a while after that, and together that duo would purchase the Holinsky Roadster driven by Brian Osgood. When Bell got transferred back to Canada, Jim tapped Johnny Michaels as his driver, but a bad accident in Watertown ended his career. This left Sewell without a driver, and roaming the pits was Mark Letcher looking for a ride. Mark jumped behind the wheel of the old car 32 and never really left. In 1978 and 79, the team built another car, which would be the team's mainstay for the remainder of Letcher's career. But coming up to join the team was Jim's son, Dan, who started racing go-karts when he was 13 years old. Dan would soon become a part of Sewell Racing. Dan's first car was a show car chassis in late 1985, and soon to be known, cool Danny Sewell began his full-time racing in 1986. In 1988, Letcher would go out of the ballpark at Jennerstown, and with the car totally destroyed, Danny became the full-time driver of the 32 in 1989. Cool Danny Sewell's career as the driver of the number 32 would go on to span 15 years, from 1985 to 2000. Sewell garnered two career wins in the family-owned Baby Blue 32 during that time, including his first ever victory, coming on July 28th of 1990. Known for their hard work and dedication, the Sewell Racing Team competed at nearly every Oswego and Isma event from 1989 through 1999, with Danny being named as one of Oswego Speedway's 50 greatest drivers in 2001. 
At the end of the 1998 season, Jim Sewell passed away, but his legacy in racing would carry on through his son. The Sewell Racing Team moved forward without their founder and patriarch. Danny's driving career lasted only two more seasons, following the scary Budweiser International Classic fire of 1999, and with the desire to put Sewell Racing's best foot forward, Danny stepped out of the seat following the 2000 season. From there, Kenny Bell, Noki Finoro, Bobby Santos, Randy Ritzkis, Lou Ciccone, Jeffrey Abold, Joey Payne, Russ Wood, and Timmy Jendrzejczyk have all helped to carry on the legacy of Sewell Racing. 15 years after Jim Sewell's passing, Sewell Racing still sits in the top three in ISMA all-time car owner points. And at Oswego, some of the Sewell drivers over the many years still sit in the top 45 in super modified all-time points, showing the longevity and consistency the team had. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Sewell Racing.